Amazon secretly pushed out this application to my device, my third generation Fi TV Cube. Lots of questions about this application already. What does it do? Is it spyware? Is it monitoring your device? Is it blocking applications? What's the purpose of the Amazon Lightning server? And more importantly, can you uninstall it without any adverse effect to your device? Well, before we do anything, let's just confirm exactly which version of Fire OS my device is running. If I go over to MyFi TV, let's click on that. Go to About, and we can see that I'm on version 7.7.0.4. Now this Amazon Lightning server I see on my device, but I don't see on my other 4K Fire Stick Macs and some of my other devices. So it does look like it's one of those things where Amazon is slowly phasing this in and pushing it out to more and more devices. So let's now quickly uninstall it and see exactly what it breaks on my device because there was some discussion that if you remove this, it will break certain things like the ability to cast to your Fire Stick or Fire TV, the ability to use your phone as a remote control, and even just the keyboard functionality you can now use on any device all of that could potentially be broken if you uninstall this. So and let me just say a big thanks to Tanya at Fire TV Sticks, who did a great video about this Lightning server. She also found some historic vulnerability analysis where there was an issue with this application or package, but it was quickly patched by Amazon. I will leave a link to her channel in the description below. Let's go back. Let's now actually try to uninstall this and see exactly what it breaks. Let's scroll down and let's find this Lightning server. And we can see on my device, my third generation Fire TV Cube, I have version 1.038.5. Do leave me a comment below telling me which version of the Amazon device you have and if you see the Lightning server installed on your device. Let's click on that. I mean, it's less than five meg in size, so it's not a size thing. But the issue always is why is Amazon allowed to push these applications to our device? They don't check with us. They don't explain exactly what they do. People just find these new things on their devices running in the background, taking up memory, taking up CPU cycles. Maybe they're monitoring, maybe they're logging, whatever they're doing. I don't want these things running on my device and I should be able to control which applications are running. So with that mindset, let's go to uninstall. I mean, it's a great thing I can actually uninstall this because many of the standard Amazon bloat applications, the built-in applications like Amazon Photos, like Amazon Kids, like Amazon Music, all these built-in apps, there's actually no real way of uninstalling them. So it takes up valuable space. And in most cases, people just don't use those applications. So what a waste really. So let's now uninstall this. Let's click on that. Do you want to uninstall this? Let's click on confirm. Hopefully my device won't explode let's see let's give that a second okay that is taking its time for a five meg application but okay that's now uninstalled my device is still working okay okay took a few seconds there to respond but it's working okay let me press the home key okay so let's now see for example if i open up downloader can i use my phone as a keyboard remote control let me do that now. This is a great feature, which really does save on typing, just having the ability to scan a QR code and you can then quickly use any phone to type something in. So let me quickly scan that on my phone. I can confirm the code. Okay, so can I now enter in some text? And this is a test. Okay, so that functionality of using your phone as a keyboard still works absolutely fine even after uninstalling the Amazon Lightning server. Let's back out of this. Now, before we continue, let me just quickly share this QR code that if you are looking for a fantastic offer for a ridiculously fast VPN, stay safe online, change your IP address, access geo-locked content, protect your privacy, you definitely want to go ahead and scan this QR code for a superb discount. Okay, let me see if I can now cast from my iPhone and beam that directly onto my Fi TV cube with the Lightning server uninstalled. So let me get my phone now. Let me see if I can now cast. Let's click on that. Okay, I do see my device in the list. Let's click there now. Three, two, one. We should be able to see my iPhone screen on my device. That's working fine. Let me swipe away. Yep, that's working fine. I can open up applications. I can open up the browser. I can browse some websites. All that's working pretty smoothly. So iPhone casting or just casting from your phone is still working absolutely fine. Let me now do the last test of using my phone as a remote control. So let's close this down. Let's open up the official Fi TV app. I can now see the Fi TV remote app connection request. I can now type in the code. I can now see all of the controls on my phone. So now when I press down, 
we can see that does send the down command. So, so using your phone as a remote control still works absolutely fine with the Amazon Lightning server removed. So really guys, what is the point of it? I'd say it's either one of two things, either it's for some kind of data monitoring or data logging, alternatively, maybe it's on the devices but hasn't fully been activated yet. We've seen in the past where Amazon do install certain things on your device, but they don't actually activate them until a later stage. So maybe this thing would activate later, but I removed it from my device. I'm not noticing anything adverse, anything negative. My device is working absolutely fine. And as I always say, the less things you have running on your device, especially from Amazon, means your device will be less busy, you'll get better performance and really just get a better streaming experience with less things running on your device. So the last thing to mention just from one of our channel partners is IPVanish have now introduced RAM only servers. So what that basically means is these servers, your VPN servers, do not actually have any kind of hard disks or any kind of solid state disk. There's just no physical storage on these servers. Everything is done in RAM. And as you guys know, the minute you switch off your machine, you switch off your server, everything in that RAM is now totally clear. So if you guys are mega privacy conscious, you wanna make sure there's no kind of data logging, no kind of monitoring. Your VPN provider should have a no logs policy, which means they're not logging anything, nothing is being stored. But just the fact of having RAM only servers really means that there's just no logging whatsoever because those servers just don't have any kind of storage. And this is something they've only rolled out in the last couple of weeks. So if you are thinking about signing up for a VPN, I personally do recommend IPVanish. I have been partnered with them for more than five years. During that time, I have looked at other VPNs like Surfshark, like Express, like Nord, but in all cases, I always come back to IPVanish just for that consistent speed, the consistent reliability, the ability to have unlimited connections. And now with the fact they have RAM only servers really just adds to the positives. And in the current climate, everybody should be using a VPN just for your own privacy, just for your own protection. And IPVanish is the VPN I personally recommend. Using my link does help support the channel. So many thanks for doing that. Do have a look in the video description and pinned comment if you want to take up this special offer. So really appreciate your support. Do leave me a comment below if you see the Lightning server on your device and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.